The property crash is here. 2022, 2023 is going to be very difficult for anyone who is thinking about being a homeowner or is already a homeowner. Inflation is already at 10%, potentially rising. Interest rates have gone up by their highest rate in the last 30 years. And of course, because of those two factors and many more factors, property prices are going to have to fall and a lot of us have lived in the bubble where property prices have always gone up property is always seen like the greatest investment property seems like the essential that everybody needs but not if you can't afford it and in a market where homes are going to crash there are a lot of people who are going to need to be prepared and be equipped to be able to take the right next steps for them so in this video I'm going to tell you how to prepare and actions that you can take to help you on your journey when it comes to either being a property owner or if you are someone who's thinking about getting on the ladder and is well and truly terrified. But don't worry, I've got you. So I am Patricia, if you don't know who I am, and I am someone who owns a fair bit of property. I am a homeowner as well as a property investor. And seeing the changes in the market, to be honest, I was kind of prepared for. I kind of knew that, you know, it, things can't be as rosy as they are forever. And that's because I'm a skeptic. I know something wrong is coming around the corner. And so for my personal journey, I had to learn how to hedge myself. And so I had very little debt, actually no debt when it came to my property portfolio. And I feel extremely privileged that I was able to do that. But I understand that there are a lot of people who do have leverage and do have debt when it comes to their home. On my personal home, I have a mortgage, but my investment assets, I do not. So I, for one, know that next year I'm going to have to remortgage. And I know that my repayments, which are circa two and a half thousand pounds, are probably going to be going towards £4,000 if I choose to stay in this home. Am I nervous? Yes. Am I concerned? Yes. Am I prepared? Yes. And I want to make sure that many of you guys are prepared as well. So I'm going to break it down. I'm going to cover what non-homeowners could be doing as well as people who already have properties and are wondering what is going to happen next. So for all the non-homeowners who are thinking about getting on the ladder, is now a good time to buy? When is a good time to buy? Is it the bottom of the crash? When will the bottom of the crash be? If I could give you those answers, I would be a millionaire. Let's say a multi, multi, multi millionaire or a billionaire, because that is literally trying to predict the future. And the reality is that we cannot necessarily find out exactly the day that the bottom of the market is going to arrive. I just don't have the ability to tell you that. And there's a lot of people who will give you those details, but they could be wrong. We don't know what the markets are going to do. We don't know what the banks are going to do. But what we do know is that if you have the resources now to make a purchase and get a mortgage or an agreement in principle, then if you are someone who wants to buy a home and you can afford it, now is as good as a time as any to make your first purchase. You are probably now highly aware about what the price of a home is and what your borrowing is going to be. The days of 1%, 2% interest rates is over. It is over. So repayments, no matter what, are going to be higher. And if you're someone who's able to budget effectively, then that's gonna be fine for you. If you're able to look at the repayments and you're like, I can afford this, and I can even afford this if this goes up by 1%, 2%, and even up to 3%, then that math may work for you at this point in time. Right now, there are mortgages on offer. So if you are someone who is looking for a mortgage and is worried, right now is a really good time to actually speak to a mortgage advisor to see what kind of lending is available to you. Do not believe that there is no financial options for you, but the criteria are going to be far tighter. Affordability is going to be a key factor that any kind of broker is going to be considering when approaching you for a mortgage. So they're going to really be looking at what your expenses are on a daily basis. So if you're someone who already has another house or if you've got a car with high loan payments, you have high expenses, you have credit card debt, all of that is going to work into your affordability criteria. And if you are deemed someone who can't afford the mortgage, then you are not 
going to get it. However, if you are someone with very low expenses, yes, you're going to be offered a mortgage. The reality is that you may not be offered a mortgage that is an amazing offer because right now, banks are being very cautious and are wanting to make sure that they can make a return. You need to think about actually the bank's earning model, right? So when they lend you money, they are trying to make a profit on the money that they lend you. And they are also borrowing money as well to give you money. So now that, you know, I think the bank rate is currently is at 3% and is predicted to go up to at least 5%, the reality is that they can't lend to you at 3%, right? They're gonna have to lend to you at 5%, 6% to be able to make a profit. And that basically means your monthly repayments are going to be higher than they used to be. But I think it's really important for anyone who had a certain perspective on what their repayments are going to be, just dash that to the side, that is over. And actually, if I didn't, I didn't share this before, but we were looking at a, buying a new home and I had been having a number of discussions about what my borrowing was going to be. And actually, I think it was about three months ago, I was offered a rate at 4%. And when I spoke to my mortgage advisor again, he's like, babe, he didn't say babe, but he's like, Patricia, um, no the best offer you're gonna have now is around 6%. And that was going to take my repayments that were going to be circa 7,000 a month because you were buying a bigger home to circa 12,000 a month. So that's a big difference. But now I'm in the mindset of realizing that I may have to buy a house that is not as expensive or be willing to take on that higher rate of repayments for a period of time. So the pros that I can share with you is that house prices are going to be falling between 10 and 30%. So if there was a home that you were looking at, that you were interested in, and you thought was out of your budget, now more than ever is a good time to actually make offers. There are a lot of homeowners who are going to be in a pinch, who are going to be willing to sell their house at a lower rate just because of the time that they are dealing with. If they are someone who's coming to remortgage and they're not going to be able to remortgage, or afford the repayments, they may be very quick at putting their houses on the market and maybe after a quick sale. Now more than ever is a great time to be able to get a house at a good price as the market is adjusting. Next, new homeowners are gonna be thinking about whether or not to go for a fixed interest rate deal or something that's a bit more flexible. This ain't financial advice, this is just my opinion, but I hate risk and I would go for fixing my mortgage repayment. Now, when it comes to being an investor, I wouldn't necessarily do that. But for someone who's buying a home that I wanna live in and I wanna enjoy in and I wanna feel comfortable in, I don't like the risk of knowing that my rate could double in six months from now or a year from now. The idea of fixing um, a mortgage um, a deal for five years, even if it's slightly higher, that personally brings me peace of mind. So you really need to determine how comfortable you feel with a repayment model. Are you ready if the rates go up or if the rates go down, are you ready to weather that storm? Are you ready to handle it if your mortgage rate doubled? You need to really think about that before making a decision around that. One piece of advice that I can actually give you guys is that if you're in the market for a home, maybe not right now, but in the next six months, now is the time to pick up your phone, call a mortgage advisor and get a deal because you can get a deal locked in early for at least six months. So if you know that your mortgage is going to change in six months from now, you should call the banks today, right? Literally be like, hey, what deal can I get? Secure a deal on the table because you don't know if the interest rates are gonna be even higher, which I feel like they really are gonna be. <laughs> but they could be even higher in a year from now and you'll be kicking yourself if you don't get an offer on the table now. And the great thing is if you get an offer on the table now, you don't have to accept it in six months from now. And if there are better deals in six months from now, then you can go ahead and take on a better deal. But to protect yourself, try and get a mortgage offer today. So is this a season for opportunity for new homeowners or new investors? The truth of the matter is yes. 
a lot of people made a killing during the last property crashes by investing into property because they had available funds or available debt to them that they were used, able to invest. Markets crash, right? But markets will grow. They may never get to the same levels as they were, so that is an assumption. But fundamentally, the thing about homes is that people always need somewhere to live. So if you have the cash, you have the affordability, Yes, I think buying a home is a decent option if you are able to do the maths and check your affordability and make sure you can afford those repayments. That would be my number one goal. Existing homeowners, this is not gonna be fun. The reality of whether or not you're budgeting or not is gonna be super important and trying to either make more income to deal with the increase in rates is gonna be a real reality. So my key advice as mentioned earlier to those who are already homeowners is literally call your banks today, especially if your, your mortgage is going to end, your mortgage offer is going to end in the next six months. Call your broker now, literally now, find out what the deals are and lock them in early. If interest rates go up even more so when it's time for you to renew, you will be kicking yourself because you could have got a better deal today. I'm telling that to myself as a reminder because, ooh child, it's getting expensive. So for the homeowners who are going to struggle to be able to pay their mortgage, you have a few options. Obviously, not being able to afford your mortgage is by missing payments. And once you miss up to three payments, you are at risk of your home being repossessed. What you really wanna do is speak to your lender to be able to negotiate some new terms to make sure you can come to an agreement when it comes to your repayments. Before you even speak to the lender, you need to get a clear idea on what you can actually afford, and then you can propose that to them. They may allow you to take a break from repayments for a period of time. They may let you defer your payments to a later period of time. They may allow you to reduce the amount you pay for a period of time, or they can extend the period of time that you pay your mortgage. So lower payments, but an additional five years of payment. If you have a high amount of equity in your property, you may be able to negotiate again a better interest repayment as well. Or you could look at switching mortgage to another provider. But fundamentally, it's a very dangerous time. And I do know that a lot of people who maybe were highly leveraged, that means that they took on a lot of debt to get a home, are going to be the ones that struggle. So those who maybe did buy to let investment 25% down, um, but at a higher rate of interest, it's going to be a difficult time. And I think one of the assessments a lot of those people can do is how much risk can they afford? How many of those assets may they need to let go of? And how can they consolidate their costs and their fees? I read a stat somewhere that a third of the world is going through this financial recession. So what people need to understand is that they are not alone in this. And what you fundamentally want to be able to do is make moves to protect yourself. But I wanted to give you guys who are thinking about getting on the property ladder or are already on the property ladder and are trying to prepare about what to do in the period ahead. So I hope this video is gonna be helpful. And in the meantime, I'll catch you later.